What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Hot Mic here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I'm one of your co-hosts. I'm the Outlaw, John Rook, joined by the man of the hour, Jeff Snyder. Snyder, how are you feeling? How are you doing, Why my am man? I the man of the hour? There's lots of men, lots of hours. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Is that so fucking hard? Take the compliment, for God's sake. Am I, am I echoing? No. Are you echo uh, I, I, Am I echoing in your ears? No, you're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you always think you're echoing. You're not echoing. Uh, we are here back to talk about the, all the stuff that's going on in the world of entertainment that's fit to print and not fit to print. Give our uh, authentic and unfiltered takes on all of it. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you all joining us live. Remember, the Streamlabs and Super Chats are open from the beginning. Streamlabs address right above Jeff's head there. Also going to pin it in the chat and send in your Super Chats if you can't do Streamlabs. Uh, although YouTube does take 50%, we'd appreciate you going through Streamlabs instead. But you can always send in your Super Chats like JMB just did. And he said, you guys are the best. That is all. Thank you, JMB. Appreciate it madly. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get into all the things going on here. So the way the show works is Jeff and I, we kind of agree on a rundown. And then we toss out subjects to each other, not knowing what order we're going to be going in for us to respond to. So that's how this thing works. Jeff, would you like to start off or do you want me to start off? I want to start off with this tweet that has been bothering me for a month. <laughs> a month? Okay. And again, it is... I'm naming names. I'm inviting yeah, her on the Hot Mike podcast if she wants to come. Oh my and that God. is Pulitzer Prize winning writer Emily Nussbaum from yeah. The New Yorker who tweeted that Jerry Seinfeld is not good on Seinfeld. He's not wow. a good actor. And that Kramer isn't good either. Wow. It was the craziest pop culture take I think I've ever read. And as someone yeah. who watches Seinfeld almost every day, I mean, Jerry is incredible on the show. Right. He's not at the level of a Julia Louis-Dreyfus or a Jason Alexander. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, I mean, he's amazing. And to not give him credit for this has been driving me nuts. Well, what is – what do you remember what the exact tweet was? Because I think she might have taken it down. Is there a possibility that she took it down? Because I don't see, I'm looking through some of the uh, um, archives here, and I don't see any tweet from her that uh, I can bring up for people to take a look at um, uh, about Jerry Seinfeld uh, or about Michael, which I think is ridiculous what she said about, uh, here we go, here we go. I think this might be it. Here we go. All right, I found it. Let me uh, share. Yeah, I was like, along. I don't think Emily Nussbaum is really the kind who deletes tweets. So. There we go. Weird to watch Seinfeld because Jerry Seinfeld is a bad actor. Kramer isn't all that funny, and yet George and Elaine are the most hilarious, watchable actors, characters ever to appear on television. Uh, and then she followed up by saying, never anger the crawhive, I guess. Guys, if I held this bad opinion Wait, due to uh, Michael Richards' comedy, Cull Up Meltdown, I would have just said that. I love plenty of comedy by bad people and dislike a lot of comedy by good people. That's not what's going on here. Uh, so, yeah, interesting interesting to kind of tackle this, this situation. Crazy. Yeah, go but ahead. Kramer's Why not special? that, not all that funny. Kramer, like, is one of the most gifted physical comedians of all time. Michael Richards, yes, yes. I mean, he's up there. It's like Chaplin and Lucy and Kramer. I mean, what do you want from me? <laughs> like, what? Well, I can't go as far as my friend here, Jeff Snyder, comparing Kramer to Chaplin. I won't do that. But I will say that I agree that he is a fantastic physical comedian. And he was arguably the breakout star of the sitcom because people were doing were loving the Kramer. They screamed whenever Kramer showed up. They didn't scream when Seinfeld or George or Elaine showed up. They screamed when Kramer would come through that door in the middle to the, when the, when the show was in its prime all the way, almost to the end, they uh, cheered. All whenever four Kramer of them up. are brilliant. Seinfeld of would course, not yes. be the greatest sitcom of all time. If it's lead character was a bad actor. Okay. Yeah. Okay, like, he's just like he's he's perfect. He's perfect. For, you know, is he playing himself? You could say that. Uh, yes, uh, but you know, obviously, it's a it's a he's a stylized version of Jerry Seinfeld. But either way, he's amazing. I've seen a hundred plus episodes that evidence this, and for someone who is one of Pulitzer, it just it stunned me. 
I'm going to have to slightly agree with Emily Nussbaum here. So we're going to have an interesting discussion because Ray Romano was someone who got a lot of crap for Everybody Loves Raymond and everyone's saying, oh, he's just playing himself. He's not that good of an actor, but he's broken out and he has done, um, you know, stuff like The Big Sick, saw so him in, in Made for Love uh, and other projects, The Irishman, where he has really shown his chops. Seinfeld has never really gone past the Seinfeld show. And look, I, arguably, I he I'm doesn't have to. He doesn't it's have to. Jerry Seinfeld is a great actor. That's not the argument. Okay, okay. What's the argument? He's then? great on the show. Right. I, I, yeah, okay, he's the worst of the four in terms of acting ability, for the sure. Worst of the four? There, there's a worst of the four Beatles. He's still a Beatle. <laughs> I don't know if there's, there's a, a worst of the four Ninja Turtles. He's still a, a turtle that knows ninja skills. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, I mean, he, he, yeah, he wasn't the greatest actor on the show for sure. But I, I agree with you. He's an essential part of the show in terms of what he's able to convey in those moments. So yeah, maybe he's not a bad, I don't think he's a bad actor, but he's not a great actor, but he's certainly good enough for that show. And the, I agree with you. People wouldn't love it as much if he was that bad, nor would people keep I'm, watching. If he I'm was a Nussbaum fan, I'm an yeah. Emily. I'm a Nussbaum fan. Okay, but that take, it was just, it just, I've just been like, every time I watch Seinfeld, I'm just like, she's just wrong. She's just wrong. <laughs> she's entitled to her opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because look, the situations that they put Jerry Seinfeld in in the show, you've got to convey certain levels of uncomfortability when he sees the pirate shirt for the first time that is such a believable reaction and then when he doesn't want to wear it having that fight with kramer in the green room and then the uncomfortableness of that interview while he's wearing that damn thing all of that is believable stuff actor to actor his reactions are perfect everything's brilliant yeah. Oh, yeah. we need to go episode by episode the guy is hilarious what do you want he certainly got better as this as the uh, series went along for sure but yeah not a guy that clearly wants to go out and do other things. He's quite happy. He's got the pop art movie coming, guys. When he wins Best Actor for Netflix's pop art movie, yeah, you could be up for a Golden Globe for that. You never know. After that B movie, I I don't, I don't hold much hope. I'll be honest. With B you. movie, yes. Let's yeah, judge exactly. him with B movie. He is coming to San Diego for a one night only, a couple of shows back to back, seven and nine thirty. Here's the deal. Do you know how much it costs to sit close to the stage right now, according to the Ticketmaster? $10,000 for one seat in the second row in front of Jerry Seinfeld. $10,000. That is fucking insane. But the fact that he can command that much speaks to the reasons why he doesn't need to go off and try to prove he can act like doesn't Ray Romano. that often. Yeah. What's that? He, he doesn't tour as much as Bruce Springsteen. Right. Well, Springsteen, four to five grand per ticket is an insane, insane thing as well, for sure. Uh, all right. There you go. That, it, it, as long as Jerry. <laughs> anything else you want to say on this, Emily? No, uh, no, please? we can move on. Okay. We can move on. I want to start with a rant. Let's let's move on with, to uh, the Blonde trailer that dropped today. The first full official trailer from Andrew Dominic, director Andrew Dominic, who did, of course, um, uh, killing them softly and the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Anna de Armas, Cuban actress Anna de Armas, stepping in to play uh, Marilyn Monroe in this adaptation of Joyce Carol Oates' fantastical retelling of the Marilyn Monroe story, uh, Norma Jean Marilyn Monroe story. Uh, I, I saw, I really, I did a trailer reaction for this. I enjoyed the trailer. I think Andrew Dominic is directing the hell out of this thing. He's jumping from color to black and white, from four by three to 16 by nine. The costumes, the look, the way he's able to simulate the looks from the movies is all great. However, physically, I don't see her as Marilyn. And the accent is there on the vowels. The accent is there at the edge of these sentences in the dialogue. And so I'm having like a, a bit of a conversation with myself about it because i mean obviously i ignore teddy kgb's terrible accent and love him in rounders i ignore anthony hopkins not quite looking like nixon at all and enjoy his performance in nixon so is this a matter of just a subjective type of thing that she will overcome that or is the fact that she has a spanish accent playing an american woman does this kind of midwestern i think midwestern woman does this kind of make it a bit unsettling or a bit off. Do so. What did? What do you think about the trailer? And what do you think about that possibility? I don't think that this is like 
I don't think of it as literal. I, I think you're right that for the average audience member, they're going to hear the accent and they're going to be like, who is, who did they cast as Marilyn Monroe here? Like what the hell is going on? This isn't how she sounded. This isn't how she talked. She wasn't right. Spanish. Um, so I think it, to the average person on Netflix, they're going to be confounded by this movie. Okay. But to me, it's no different than like, you know, that Bob Dylan movie, right? Uh, with Kate Blanchett. Oh yeah. Frank uh, Dylan. Like, it, to me, it's it's similar to that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I mean, this is like a a take on yeah. It. Like, yeah. Are, are they are, like I don't? Is Adrian Brody actually playing like Arthur Miller? Yeah, he's playing Ar- Arthur he's playing Miller. Arthur Miller, but it, like, is kind of Valley playing Joe DiMaggio? He's he just is. He, admit, he he said that earlier this week that he is playing Joe DiMaggio. He is playing Joe DiMaggio. Now. Okay, yeah. like I, I wasn't sure if they were just being like, oh, no, this is like a famous athlete. This is a famous right. playwright. But not doing the yeah, like a movie. nondescript. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's listen, I think Dominic is a really talented director. Uh sometimes bites off a little bit more than he can chew. Um, he may have again here, we'll see. But I, I think yeah. this is gonna be an art film that you know I'll be able to respect and, and I won't really have any issue with Anna Darmus, you know, playing Marilyn Monroe. I broke the casting March 2019. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, well, that makes sense because. She says she has been working on this part for over a year, uh, watching Marilyn Monroe movies over and over and over again, studying the photograph, studying the voice, uh, finding out all she can about her. And this is, you know, and, and I remember when this book came out, and I remember it was controversial because it was, you know, Joyce Carol Oates who loves to, to, to rile things up, but also no stranger to controversy. No, no, Joyce Carol, Carol Oates, but she's also incredibly intelligent. So her takes are fascinating to debate over and fight over and certainly her interpretation here what she's saying is she wants this film in essence to speak for what is happening nowadays where people are being made aware of the treatment the women have had from people in power no matter what power structure it is hollywood business or otherwise and so that could be a fascinating thing to explore in this film for sure um and yeah i think it's going to be one of these art films that either people are going to love or absolutely blindingly hate um, and I love that Dominic is like, it's NC-17. If you don't like that, kiss my ass. I, I do appreciate that. Yeah, I don't, I don't miss- know how NC-17 works on Netflix, you know? like It's the first time it's ever been one. Can't yeah. kids still hit the button? Or, I don't like, know. There's there some sort of passcode that they need to do, like, you know, we have on our press screeners. Oh, yeah, um, you can definitely set your Netflix to oh, to not play certain types of uh, R and above. Right, the parental yeah. controls are on, but it's yeah. like who's going to know to like up the parental controls even yeah. more because it's NC-17 or whatever. I just, I don't know. Um, yeah, and listen, what, they're, they're using that as a selling point. Yes. Obviously. Sure. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. Come, come look at one of the world's, you know, most beautiful women. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, Again, I don't know if, if is, is it a, is there a sexual assault scene? Is it like a rape scene? Is that why it's NC-17 or is it a sex scene? Well, there certainly have been accusations that she was sexually assaulted a number of times through her career. Uh, yeah, until she it may be a violent her. sex scene, yeah. uh, which may be why it's NC-17. I'm yeah, not there sure. There might be some some ra- a yeah, couple I, of rape scenes. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody's seen it yet. And that's why it's like, you know, all the discourse today. It's like, yeah. I don't know. Why don't we um, wait to see the movie? Yeah. <laughs> God forbid. God forbid. Um, all right. And let's move on to the other teaser trailer that dropped today, the Oppenheimer trailer. Uh, uh, Jeff, I know this is one both you and I have put a little bit of a pin in. We're still a year away or a little bit under a year away from this film coming out in July of 2023. This teaser trailer was like a minute long. You heard the clock ticking. You could hear the, the there's a little bit of that strain, like kind of that Joker dark night kind of ee- underneath. And then you saw these images of fireballs and explosions within the fire and Emily Blunt playing Oppenheimer's wife, kind of giving a little bit of a narration there. And you heard other people speaking about him saying, you know, he took the power from God, you gave them the power to destroy themselves. He's the most important man alive. What is the end result going to be? And then we just see a quick shot uh, for a few seconds of uh, Killian Murphy as Oppenheimer walking there in black and white. So what are your thoughts on this? And and overall, I mean, we seem to be seeing the return of black and white just here with Blonde. Here with it. We had Mank last, uh, a couple of years ago. Like, black and white seems to be making a little bit of a subtle comeback. Tragedy of Macbeth. What do you think? Um, I think anytime you can spend $100 million on a summer blockbuster about a nuclear scientist, you got to do it. <laughs> 
Okay. And... Um, <laughs> sorry, I just, just got a, a text from one of my writers. Okay. Um, what were we talking about? Oppenheimer, the trailer, goddammit. Oppenheimer. Uh, listen, I think it's going to be really good. I think it could be the movie that brings him his best picture, mm. uh, you know, possible win um, uh -huh. or director win. Yeah, like, you know, th this is certainly a change of pace for him. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be a, about whether he can find the emotion in this story. We know that he can do d dazzling visuals and he can show you what, you know, it looks like to be the on the inside of an exploding atomic bomb and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, can he get the human interactions between Oppenheimer and his wife and all, you know, the bureaucracy that he had to deal with and whatnot um, that we will see. And there's a massive... Um cast here man i mean robert downey jr matt damon emily blunt uh jack quaid uh kenneth brana this is a heavyweight cast that he is bringing to this film and i i i'm i judging from the minute that we got today i am leaning towards what you said this may be the film that he finally gives nolan all the oscars and uh, uh takes him to the next level and it's kind of interesting too because this is Dunkirk was his British World War II film. This is, in essence, his American World War II film uh, shortly after, only a few years after Dunkirk. Um, and this is the first one for, for Universal Pictures as well, after having done the, what numerous films or the last 20 years doing films for Warner Brothers. Yes. <laughs> Oppenheimer, guys, coming next summer. There's a countdown and everything. Tick, 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 tick. It's coming sooner. Tick, tick. <laughs> It is. It is. All right. Well, your thought. What do you? What do you? What do you want to talk about next, smart ass? What do you want to talk about next? <laughs> He's in one of his moods, ladies and gentlemen. He's in one of his moods. We got 125. You watching right now? Please hit a like on this video. No, you I just have a writer it. dealing with a fucking crisis. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm. I'm a boss. Okay. Tell him you're busy. Tell it's him you're busy. You have to do podcasts, John. Uh, okay. What do we want to talk about? What else is on the list? Let's talk about like um, SDCC. Yeah, double C. Did you get the COVID yet? No, I'm good. I'm four days out. I'm feeling good. Okay. Tomorrow is like one of the lucky ones. Yes. Yeah. No surprise. You know why? Because I'm not a jerk and go to multiple parties and take my mask off. I kept to my friends who were vaccinated for the most part at parties. I did speak to two or three people who I did not know, but I made sure they had the um yeah the orange uh, band there that signifies that you have been vaccinated. So uh, I kept it to a minimum in terms of the amount of interactions I had with people outside my circle of friends. I didn't go to too many panels, so I wouldn't uh, necessarily subject myself to it. And when I was in a panel, I was wearing my mask the whole time. So to How me- How did you moderate a panel, John? How did that go? Must yeah, I did a moderated panel for Impact Winner, uh, which is a great Audible, uh, uh, true, uh, sorry, Audible, um, what do you call those? The Audible series. Kind of like Sandman, an audible series for uh, it's a post-apocalyptic uh, tale about uh, vampires in England and the humans that are battling them uh, during that time in post-apocalyptic time, which is pr pretty fantastic. A lot of Himish Patels in it, um, Holiday Granger, uh, the uh, lead actress from Hannah, uh, Liam Cunningham from Game of Thrones does a lot. Of, so it's like 12 episodes, half an hour. So Skybound reached out to me, my friend Alexandra August, who's an executive producer on projects. She said, would you be willing to host the panel? Never hosted a panel at Comic Con. So I was like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Had We had like 70 people in the room out of the 100 uh, seat there. And uh, they really enjoyed it. We got to debut a new a new uh, comic that's attached to it and announced that there will be a season two and three. And I know they're looking at uh, the possibility of some bigger names coming on to voice some of the characters in this second season. So yeah, it was a fun time and it was a nice little feather in my cap. But uh, after seeing the person who, who moderated the panel for Sandman, in Hall H, I am now 100% ready to host a panel in Hall H because <laughs> I can do a better job than that. So <laughs> I am ready to go. Um, but yeah. Uh, well, there's yeah, a lot of news that came out of San Diego, John. Mm -hmm. A lot of news besides the feather in your cap. Uh, we had a whole slate announcement from Marvel. Yes. So why don't you take us through that, dude? Okay. Well, Marvel was massive. This is the one to be at. If you weren't at this Marvel panel, I don't know what you were doing at Comic-Con, to be honest with you. We barely got in, thanks to some um, shenanigans from some of my friends. They got me into this panel, and I actually got to be there and watch it. And it was fantastic to be in the room. So here's the deal. 
Kevin, I think Kevin Feige knows that phase four is synonymous with disappointment. So they made a very strong push to preview phase five and preview phase six. That is fascinating. I don't know if Feige's ever done that before, but I think that was a very clear uh, decision by them. Don't worry too much about phase four. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. Look over here. here. Phase five. Basically what he was doing. So he announced that uh, Wakanda Forever will end phase four, and then they'll immediately jump into phase five. He announced that Daredevil will get an 18-episode season, which in my opinion means that they're probably going to launch Punisher, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Iron Fist with an Asian actor in the lead. So it seems to me that's what they're going to be doing. I mean, why else would you give Daredevil 18 episodes when Netflix barely got above 13? So, uh, but yeah, they announced, they showed the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which was heartbreaking and very moving. They brought out the cast uh, who had not seen Schindler's list of of the MCU, I'm told. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. There's rumors that, because James made it very clear, this is the end of his trilogy and the end of his time doing Guardians and maybe the end of this crew together. Uh, And they went to his brother, Sean Gunn, who was clearly very emotional, was crying and spoke about the journey of these three movies with his brother. And so it was very moving stuff. A lot of the cast was crying because they hadn't seen it. Uh, so it was pretty cool. We got the She-Hulk stuff. The people came out for She-Hulk, talked about that. Uh, they also came out to talk about uh, Secret Invasion, which we got a one-minute uh, teaser on Secret Invasion. which looks awesome. Sam Jackson all bearded up and shit. Olivia Coleman telling him, oh, man, you can't handle it anymore. I got to take over. Uh, and there's a lot with Don Cheadle and Yelena Belova. Uh, and then we got uh, the really big one. Uh, well, one of the second big ones, which was uh, Antum, uh, Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania. We got to see a trailer for that uh, with Kang in the trailer. Uh, and MODOK. MODOK is now coming live action to, uh, to um, uh, the MCU. And then the big one, of course, the cherry on top of the Sunday, Really, the frosting and just about the whole cake. Uh, Wakanda Forever. They started out with these performers who did the song for Black Panther. They came out, performed live. Uh, walked through the crowd, which was incredible. Then Ryan Coogler came out, brought out the cast, brought out the new cast members. And then they played, uh, they talked about Chadwick and the loss of Chadwick and, you know, what this all meant. And then they played the trailer and it was pretty incredible. Uh, And then finally- It was a great trailer. It was a great trailer. trailer. I thought thought that trailer was actually really impressive. And I know everyone was talking about the Guardians 3 trailer. That hasn't been released online yet. So I haven't seen that. Um, But Black Panther 2 looked- like a worthy follow-up, especially in lieu of some of the rumors that I think had plagued it, given the sort of volatile nature of the production. Absolutely. And it seemed, and from what I've heard from a couple of friends who work in post-production in Marvel, they tell me this is the greatest Marvel movie uh, that has happened that maybe ever. So that makes me very excited to see what we're going to get. There was a teaser of a possible new Black Panther, we don't know who that's going to be, but Tenoch Huerta was announced as the as Namor Submariner, and he came out and spoke very eloquently and then spoke in Spanish and talked about how he is so honored to be doing this and that he gives thanks to all the people who crossed the river, essentially implying immigration there, crossed the river, leaving behind the people they love to find a better life in this country. So very moving stuff there for me as a Latino. I lost my fucking mind finally seeing something like this. It's going to be awesome that they're changing the heritage and the origin of Submariner to be Latino instead of Asian. Uh, and, and that's going to be fascinating to see how they make that work. But then Feige talked about Phase 5, as I mentioned, then Phase 6. And he was saying Fantastic Four, I think, is going to kick off Phase 6. And the end of Phase 6 is going to be two films, Avengers The Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars. Now, uh, BuzzFeed, um, in some, uh, uh, maybe they were hitting the head with a brick or something. They claim, They were like, Well, we think Secret Wars might be based on this run. You mean the Secret Wars run? The one that I actually have behind me? The one that's been done twice? Yeah, maybe it might be. But the Avengers Kang Dynasty, there is no um, uh, run of the Kang Dynasty. So it's going to be interesting to see what Kevin Feige is going and the Marvel people are going to create to lead to that for sure. So. Um, yeah, a lot was announced here, and I think they were trying to put everybody back in the same lane again and get excited for what's coming. And D23 is on the horizon. Who knows what kinds of surprises we could get there? All kinds of casting announcements, some maybe some director news. 
yeah, uh, that is going to be on uh, that is going to be on September, I think. D23 is that correct? I think it's the same weekend as TIFF, so I think that is in September. They, look, TIFF, the Emmys, and D23 are on the same weekend. It makes no fucking Ooh. sense, Jeff. Tough choice. What do you want to do? Go to go to Disney's fan convention or see uh, awards movies? Why don't you send me to D23 for you? Come on, I'll go. Um, um, uh, if you need an outlet to put on your application, sure. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, they've got all that stuff going on there. So what did you think about all the news coming out, Jeff? Did any of it affect you in any way, shape, or form? Did any of it move you in any way, shape, or form? No. Okay. <laughs> what about DC only showing up with uh, Shazam and Black Adam but not touching yeah. Flash? Not touching Aquaman 2? Batgirl? Blue Beetle? They left it all on the shelf. And now what do you think about that? I think it, it's they're not there to beat the drums or, or unveil their master plan or, you know, what connects with what. I mean, yeah, because I know people were looking forward to Joker 2 announcements as well. Mm -hmm. They're there to sell. Yeah. They're there to sell the next two movies that they have coming out, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And we'll deal with the two after that and the four after that down the line. But, yeah, uh, yeah this was pretty much just about, you know, uh, saying we've got The Rock coming right. in black Cat. that's basically what it was all about right dc fandom has not well, happened yet this year do you think that well, that do, was do we think of the rock was going to share his moment with henry cavill come on yeah well he seemed, he seemed to tease like he was yeah what are your thoughts on that because i mean a number of websites uh dan Murrow calling out screen rant about how they uh you know pushed this rumor that cavill was going to show up and then got a bunch of articles out of it when cavill didn't show up uh, there have been a number of influencers who've been, who are on social That's media. That's the saying, whole model these days for all these sites. It's just say something, then correct the thing, then you know write about the fan backlash to the thing that you created. Happen. It's just it's it's asinine, which is why I don't participate in that, uh, and and I'm relieved to not have to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, no, it was not. Kevin did not have COVID. That is not why he didn't show up. For fuck's sake, get out of here, man. Kevin has COVID. <laughs> get out of here. I love you, Songbird, but that's ridiculous, man. Um, all right, let's hit. Let's hit some of these super chats here that we've got from uh, some of the fans who came in and are dropping. We got 155 of you watching right now. Please hit that like button and uh, uh, leave a comment down below if you're watching later. Suck says uh, uh, JS a good. Oh, Jerry Seinfeld's a good straight man. Do you think Oppenheimer will be a financial flop because of Tenet? What do you think of uh, the recast T'Challa movement? Is it sexist? Ooh, interesting. Uh, two strong questions, Jeff. There's a movement to recast? Yeah, there's a hashtag recast T'Challa. People felt like they want it to be like James Bond, like Superman, like Batman. Why right. can't Black Panther be recast? So, I mean... I thought he, the character was recast, no? Or they haven't said who's going no, to it's play. Black, like someone is going to be playing Black Panther, but not right. T'Challa. But not T'Challa, exactly. Right. I no. I I think that you should retire that character with Chadwick. That is his character. I think that is a a sign of respect. I don't know what would what would be sexist about it. Maybe they're implying that T'Challa would have to be Black Panther. So if you because a woman can't be Black Panther, exactly, exactly. So yeah, that, that I guess is sexist. Um, do I think Oppenheimer will be a financial flop? No. Hmm. It sounds like the budget is only a hundred, right? Yeah. Around there. Maybe it's one 110, 120. I feel like given the star power in this movie and given Nolan's name, um, it's gonna end up on the right side of the ledger. I, I don't see yeah. this being a financial flop in just about any world. Um, nor nor was Tenet like a flop. Right. Right, it, it may be underperformed, but yeah, made a hundred million. I mean, it's made for a hundred million dollars. You're right, Jeff. I just looked it up. It's a hundred million, which is kind, of, which is you know millions of dollars less than he spent on other films. Inception was one hundred six. Uh, Dark Knight was two fifty. Uh, two fifty. So it just all depends on what. And this is going to be a much more quieter film. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if it's a financial success. But I, I imagine people want to see a good movie. And certainly Nolan is one of those ones that has delivered way more often than he hasn't. So Tenet is one speed bump. Uh, I don't think it indicates that people won't go see his films. You know, uh, Brandon says, uh, should X-Men be introduced with an already established team slash Xavier school? Or should it be a slow burn to X-Men with cameos introducing characters through the other properties slash solo films? And Professor X slowly gathering his team. 
Um, this is a good question because Kevin Feige talking about Fantastic Four after the con after Comic Con said we are not going to do origin story for Fantastic Four. Everybody knows how the Fantastic Four now got their powers. There are multiple films that explain it to you in comic books, so we're not doing that. But with the X Men, would it be a different situation since that team has so much baggage to it? Do you think it's better that they introduce the characters one by one through different films, or have them all introduced at once in a X Men film? No, I could see doing Professor X early, like in a post credit scene, mm -hmm. um, you know, introducing him and then lo laying the groundwork for him to assemble his X-Men team the next time you see him or whatever. Yeah. Um, if I was Marvel, I'd be looking very closely at Joseph Quinn for a role Ooh. in X-Men. Uh, that would make a lot of sense. Quinn. Quinn could be an interesting. Cyclops? What do you think for Wolverine? What do you think? For no, for, I think Cyclops would be interesting. Or yeah. who knows? You know, who knows what other what characters they're going to have? The I'd beast? like to see maybe some different kinds of X Men. I could see him as the Beast. As Beast, I could see him as Beast. Yeah. Um, all right, Keltrick uh, Pickens says opinion on Alan Horn returning at Warner Brothers. Yeah, I, mean, I pitched this to you, Jeff. As a massive lifelong DC Comics fan, I'm excited because he did an interview with Kim Masters at uh, Hollywood Reporter and confirmed he will be involved with DC. So thoughts on this, on Alan Horn coming back as an advisor to Warner Brothers? I mean, I feel like Alan Horn has probably felt like, you know, well, what am I doing at Disney? Like, what was he What was he doing? Was he even there officially, or had he sort of been phased out? Yeah, I feel like he was phased out, man. Um, I, don't, I don't know with, like, Chappick coming in, if Alan Horn – if Chappick was really relying on Alan Horn in the way that maybe Iger did. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think he was probably just getting restless and you know, it's a different regime at Warner brothers. So he was able, he's like, Hey, he probably always has felt like that's my home yeah. Warner brothers. But you know, the last regime that was there, you know, it, it didn't end well for him. Um, you know, yeah. And so now he felt comfortable returning and I'm sure he's, you know, going to be getting the respect that he believes he was, you know, deserved all along. And it's not an official like exec. He doesn't have to deal with the bullshit when you're a consultant. Right. right? Yeah. It's like, Oh, he doesn't have to worry about direct reports and just like all the shit that comes with being an, an executive. Um, he kind of just gets to fly in and, and deal with, you know, different crises and, uh, I think it's smart, uh, you know, on Zaslav's part to rely on a guy like that who's seen it all, particularly yeah. seen it all at his at that very studio. Yeah. Um, and I think that the the big thing here, which you know, a friend of, and I were were talking about today, is he could bring Nolan back. Yeah. That's the big thing is that you know they lost Nolan under you know Kyler. Uh, he went over to Universal to do Oppenheimer. Could Warner Brothers bring Nolan back with the help of Alan Horn? Yeah. Yeah, think about this. Alan Horn was there. Um, he was forced out in 2013 as the president and chief operating officer of Warner Brothers. Went to Disney and for nine years cultivated relationships with Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Pixar. Oversaw a bunch of success at Disney for nine years. So maybe Zaslav, you know, because Zaslav has said uh, very um, straightforwardly that he wants to challenge Marvel with D with WB with DC. He wants to challenge Marvel down the road. So he's slowly bringing this team in together. That's going to help him do that. And Alan Horn has certainly had the magical touch. because, as you said, he oversaw the Harry Potter franchise and the Christopher Nolan's dark Knight trilogy. So this guy coming back to Warner brothers may be a sign that we're going to start seeing a different approach, a more, uh, a stronger approach, a more intelligent approach, uh, a more linear approach to dc and to the way they're running these characters and don't be surprised if we don't see a superman very soon announced if we don't see another batman movie announced soon um this is going to be interesting to see how it's going to go forward we only have one 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 three in the in the pike or in the pipe and then we got aquaman 2 coming so maybe this is a way of kind of slowly figuring out how to put this all together a seasoned guy like alan horn can certainly help him do that and like you said uh, jeff he stays out of the bullshit which if is really Aaron good. Edgerton is not Superman or Wolverine in the next 12 months. I don't know what Hollywood is doing. I don't see him as Superman, but Wolverine for sure. I don't you mind. can't see Taron Edgerton as Superman with like Clark Kent glasses, like being the reporter. No, he's too short. Thank you. Yes. I've said my piece on that. You got to be statuesque. And I hate to break it to you. If Bond can't be American, 
Superman can't be British. British. That's just my my two cents on it. Even though I love Cavill as Superman, eventually, is I think he's done. I think King Cavill comes back. Do you think Alan Horn could bring Cavill back? We already, I already, we already wrote this on below the yeah. line. Neil, Neil wrote it. Uh, it's no, done. Henry Cavill doesn't want, shouldn't want to come back. There you go. All right. Like Fair he, enough. he has a career. Right, right, right. He doesn't need Superman. Yeah, and I misspoke. I do want a British Cavill back as Superman. Sorry about that. I don't think Taron Egerton is the right choice though. He's too diminutive. Maybe Jimmy Olsen. Uh, Mike Joyce is a dra- Blackbird. What's that? Have you watched Blackbird? Uh, no, I haven't. Dude. Does he grow in height? In I'll, put, I'll put it. To, uh, does he grow in height? I'm telling you right now, the word diminutive does not come to mind. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I mean, Jackman was taller than him in that Eddie the Eagle movie. Come on now. Mike Joyce says, a Drago Jr. movie? Do we really need a Rocky cinematic universe? Who would you want to play a young Burgess Meredith in the Mickey origin story? Let's talk about that. That's, a, that's on the rundown. Uh, Drago, uh, it said, Deadline reported this and The Rap reported this, that there is a Drago script being written right now about a is it a prequel or a sequel movie what is it jeff i don't even know is it a movie or series i don't know <laughs> you're the one that pitched it to me did i uh yeah i've got the text if you want me to bring it up uh i don't know <laughs> i mean i feel like this falls in line with amazon's dad movie strategy or dad tv series strategy yeah. whether it's jack ryan or reacher or whatever i feel like a drago series would appeal to that viewer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do we know do we have clarification on movie or series or here's not? the creed 3 has been pushed to 2023 first of all let's start there um uh and now they're expanding into a spin-off film called drago from screenwriter robert lawton this is from the rap Okay, Drago's, so it, it, they said the plot details are scarce, but remember we had Victor Drago in Creed 2 that uh, Florian Montano played, um, uh, and they're not confirming if either of them are coming back uh, to the film, and it, whether whether it'll be a prequel or a sequel. You don't have, have a show film. without them. What are you talking about? You what? You can't what? You don't have a show without Dolph Lundgren. Right. What, would it be a sequel or prequel? What do you think they would do? Either way, it's Dolph Lundgren, no? Yeah. Or, oh, I, I see what you're saying. If it's a prequel. Right. You can recast if it's a prequel. Oh, God. I don't know if it would work necessarily, but you'd recast. There are not a lot of guys walking around who you could do that with. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Taron Egerton, according to you. Taron Egerton. There, but, Egerton's right? gigantic, dude. Why don't you watch the fucking show and then, and then you can get back to me, okay? I like him for Wolverine, dude. I, I already conceded that. Wolvie is a five. Wolvie's four foot five, man. He's perfect Dude, for that. They, Hollywood can do anything. What do you mean? They put him on a fucking apple crate. They make they make Tom Cruise look like the biggest star ever. He, guy's five six. How dare you? I won't have you denigrate Tom Cruise on this show. How dare you? Uh, would you want to see a young Burgess Meredith if there's a Mickey origin story? Would you want to yeah, see that? Start Sam Levine. Who Sam Levine is Burgess Meredith? Come on. I like that idea, though, actually, to be honest with you. Let's see here. Mike Joyce also says, um, has it just been confirmed that Batfleck is in Aquaman 2? I haven't heard anything about that. So uh, if it has been, I don't know, Jeff, have you heard anything? I don't know. I being? don't care. I don't care. Why do we want to know every fucking cameo in every fucking comic book movie? Mike uh, Joyce. Do you want, what? What do you think about Ben Affleck, Mary, and Jennifer Lopez? Then, real quick, feel uh, is I, that a good thing? It, it makes me believe in true love. Oh Lord, I love the idea that a couple can break up and get back together. Yeah, fifteen years later, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm all for it. All right, this is it's some stream labs here. Micah says, um, "Breaking." According to Micah here, I haven't looked this up. Says MGM has just lost the film rights for Tomb Raider. Alicia Vikander is no longer attached to the role, and a bidding war has started for the rights. What are your thoughts on that, Jeff? Uh, isn't this going to Netflix? I mean... Uh, here we go. It's from The Wrap. <laughs> yes. MGM has lost the film rights, sparking the bidding war here. Um, MGM had till May of this year to greenlight a Tomb Raider sequel and the window passed. So now a host of Hollywood movie studios are in the mix. I don't... Clear, they have never been able to get this fully right. I know that Isn't people love that. Is there a series engine. in the works? Uh, is there a series in the works? I don't know if there's a series in no. the works. No, I don't know right now. If it, Put it this way. This is my fucking prediction for it. Go ahead. Okay, Netflix. Netflix mm-hmm. is going all in on these video game 
properties. Yeah. Right. And and I think that I think it has plans for Tomb Raider if it could get its hands on it. So right, right. Um. Yeah. I mean, the Alicia Vikander film was okay. wasn't great. The second Tomb Raider film from Angelina Jolie was no good. And you go back and watch the first one; it's kind of dated. So. The question is, yeah, there's a bidding war, but are people really clamoring for a Tomb Raider movie? I don't really know that they are, yeah, video clever. game wise, totally. But a but a movie. Just, what, did, what did the last movie make? Do we know worldwide? I can take a look. I don't have it at the. My I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, I was gonna say. Why don't you you know, kibitz while I look it up? All right, Tomb Raider made two seventy four worldwide. Right. Oof. That's not. It's not. That's not bad. I mean. Not good. Uh, no, it's, it's not, it, you want to see that number around 400, I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like it, it underperformed, but I also don't think, you know, Vikander was necessarily right. Yeah. Um, she's just not any sort of box office draw. She's not a Margot Robbie. She isn't. Yeah. Um, so that, I have no de desire to see Irma Vep either. No desire. Yeah. You know, I think MGM kind of cheaped out on it. Like if you're going to do Tomb Raider, like you got to spend $125 yeah. million probably yeah. to do it. Um, so yeah, I imagine that it's going to wind up at one of the streamers and it's because they need IP. Like if you, if there's IP that's available, you have to bid on it. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and Netflix doesn't have that IP. Like look at, look at it's slate for the rest of the year. Right. Um, so I, I think it's just about that. It's not about our fans clamoring for this. It's yeah. like, am, if I'm an executive, can I justify spending X amount on this? You know, and I think by bringing in a big, a big, you know, franchise to the streamer, then they would. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, this is from the direct. New photos confirm that Ben Affleck uh, is returning in Aquaman two. Jason Momoa took the in Jason Momoa took to Instagram to share two images of himself with Ben Affleck. He says, reunited, Bruce and Arthur, love you and miss you, Ben, WB Studio Tours, just explored the back lot, all right, busted on set, all great things coming, Aquaman 2, all my aloha. So basically teasing that he will be back uh, in uh, Aquaman. So, uh, yeah. And Affleck's like, got to eat, got to eat them, them Dunkin' Donuts. Look at these guys. These are pretty These are pretty men. These are pretty men. And Affleck's the fucking man. Hey, yes, I don't disagree with you, brother. I don't disagree with you. So it's great. Both of these dudes are the men, in my opinion. I like both of these guys. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, uh, let's see here. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Jeff's biggest fan, Hi Roca, said, All right, Snyder, did Bill Murray touch Kiki Palmer's hair? How pissed was she? Were there witnesses? Is she willing to be in the movie if Murray is recast? Is Aziz Ansari ever going to direct the movie? If you can't answer these, what's your favorite movie, Candy? Candy. My favorite movie, Candy. Um, ooh, that's tough, man. It just depends on the mood. I, I guess Sour Patch Kids. If I had to go, oh, yikes! But like these days, it might be Peanut M and M's. Fair enough. Um, about all the Kiki Palmer stuff, yeah, because like we did discuss it, right, on another podcast. We did discuss it, but you, you you didn't go too deep on it. So, what do you know about the situation? Remind the folks. We got two hundred people watching us right now. So, remind the folks. Uh, I, I heard, and again, this is unconfirmed, blah, 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 that he, like, I don't know if she had an afro and he, like, touched her hair like oh. that, or if she was wearing pigtails and he pulled a pigtail. That's how okay. I heard it, is that he okay. pulled a pigtail. Allegedly, by the way. Allegedly. We're not going to get sued. Allegedly. All right. But, like, you know, like like a kid on the kindergarten playground, yeah. you know, pulling someone's hair. An 80-year-old man acting like a kid in a playground, yeah. Come on. And she didn't take kindly to it. Um, yeah. I don't know if it, if it had happened once already before and he'd been told not to, and then he did Maybe it again. Maybe. It was that kind of a situation. I don't, you know, like her response to, you know, to the question on the nope carpet or whatever, where she's like, I don't know like what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> I mean, Kiki Bonner, you're a good actress. You're, you're, you're a she very is. good actress and she's very good. Nope. But like, yeah. I don't know if you're that good an actress. <laughs> like, I, I just don't, they don't shut down a movie that is budgeted over $10 million. You don't shut that down because the grip had a problem with Bill Murray. Yeah. Right? You do it because the leading lady had a problem with Bill Murray. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, I, I, you know, why aren't, why haven't they resumed production or, you know, why aren't they going back to shoot? I don't know if they're waiting for tempers to cool or whatever. I don't know if, 
they will recast him. If they were going to do that, you would think that they would have just done it already and, yeah. and resumed, you know, the production or whatever. I, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe they saw half the movie and they were like, yeah, we don't need to finish this. This isn't yeah. going well. We'll use this as an excuse to end, to stop the production. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who, who fucking knows, man? Who yeah. knows? Fair point. They know, obviously. I think it's an unfortunate because I think, you know, Aziz, has, has, his career got knocked off course. Yeah. And I don't know if it, if he fully deserved that, um, what happened to him. You know, like, people have bad dates. You know, yeah. just because you're a celebrity doesn't mean that, you know, you should have to have those bad dates written about necessarily. Um, and everyone's entitled to their opinions on on that particular one. But any the, the bottom line is that his career was going in this direction and then it just got, you know, yeah. knocked off course. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, he's worked really hard to get it back on track. And I think it's unfortunate for him that that this is yet another blow. Um, yeah. OK. Adam Jimenez says, hey, guys, I saw that Alan Horn is back as WB as Concierge. Big moves are happening over there, at least at least I think. I honestly think they should be doubling down on the flash. I can't believe they couldn't show a clip with Keaton in it. Keep it real. The idea that, that oh, they, they didn't want to show the flash because of the PR and stuff like that. No, no I, really don't, don't, I really don't think. I mean, okay. maybe that, that plays a part in it. Right. But they're still going to have to sell this movie, guys. And they're going to sell it when they're ready to sell it. Hmm. Um, they don't have to start selling it early. Maybe you're right. It, maybe they would have tried, you know, if, if this Ezra stuff wasn't around. Oh, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I just don't I don't think that it's like, oh, they're embarrassed by the movie, like mm -hmm. because they didn't show anything at Comic-Con. Like right. they could very well double down on it. Like it's it's going to be big. Yeah, I think so, too. I am two fly camps says, hey fellas, how disappointed were you both by the DC event at Comic-Con? No flash Aquaman Batgirl of Blue Beetle. Black Adam looks decent, but come on, it's Black Adam. Where are the heavy hitters? Is DC hopeless for the next two to five years? Uh, I don't think it's hopeless because Batgirl's coming out. Uh, Blue Beetle is coming out. Batgirl, you think that's the savior? Well, I'm just saying these are coming out to kind of show you a new direction, a new path that DC is walking. Aquaman 2 is coming out. Who knows if that's going to make a billion dollars. You've got Lady Gaga coming in for Joker 2. We haven't heard any stories on the Batman, but rumors are it'll be another five years before we see a sequel. And when it comes to The Flash, that is coming out. The Flash movie is going to come out. So if people love that, then all of a sudden DC doesn't look so bad. you know. So it feels that way right now because I think everyone's piling on DC. But if DC comes with a strong 2023 and knocks it out of the fucking park, then everyone's going to change their mind. And guess what? Nothing changed. They had their plan. And they were going forward with their plan. You guys just were deciding that it was over and that they were looking foolish. And then, boom, they unleashed their plan. And all of you went to see the, mov the movies and the shows multiple times. And they, lo they look like geniuses by the end of the year. That's possible. It's also possible that these films underperform. They're not that good. And they stumble and fall and look ridiculous. Either way, I think they're banking on a strong 2023 to see, um, to kind of retake a little bit of the... Um, territory that they've kind of seeded here i, I think dc is in a good position with their sequels they have two billion dollar sequels coming out they have yeah. you know the rock which is something marvel doesn't have yeah uh yeah you know there's no superman there's no wonder woman necessarily on, on the docket although mm -hmm. wonder woman 3 will most likely happen um, yeah well oh, that's it's happening not, it's not happening like next year or something like that right, right. um yeah I'm, i i think dc will be fine I, it'll yeah. just be interesting to see if if Zaslav makes any changes to the executive structure if he keeps Walter Hermada long term, that kind of mm. thing. Um, okay. Someone in the chat had asked about my tweet. Okay. About uh, okay, my Dr. Doom tweet. Okay. Yeah. You, you posted your Dr. Doom tweet. You got everybody excited. You got a bunch Dr. of. Dr. Doom is obviously the next like Thanos. Like, you know, they, they want to say that? it's Kang, right? But it's, I mean, Kang's going to be like the mini boss. Okay. Right? I mean, he's not going to be, he's not a Thanos level foe, nor do I think Jonathan Majors is really a, you know, Thanos level villain. Um, okay. So I think they're, it's all about Dr. Doom, right? I have yet to see a successful Dr. Doom on screen. So I can't 100%, no, no offense to Toby or uh, Julian, but I have yet to see a damn good Dr. Doom. So I personally, 
am not in that camp yet until you show me, A, who's cast as Doctor Doom, and okay. then I see how Doctor Doom works in Marvel. Right now, I love Jonathan Majors. I think he's great as Kang, and in that trailer for Quantumania, he stands out like a mofo. So I don't necessarily think it's an issue to have him be the main bad villain. You want to hear my theory. Go ahead. On who is going to be Doctor Doom. Yeah, because you previewed Doctor Doom, and they didn't even say anything about it at Mar and during the Marvel panel, which I thought was a little bit of a cheap influencer move by you. But whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. First of all, John, it 100% was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it was, motherfucker. I knew when I, I saw the gif. I was like, you cheap I tweet out a, a thing of, of Doom and everything. Like, oh, my God. Is something with Doom coming? You're 100%. You must know. He's Jeff Snyder. He must know. The fucking clap. Busted. Uh, okay, here's my theory. Go ahead. This is not news. I don't want it posed as news. I don't want it aggregated as news. Please tweet this out, everybody. Go ahead. <laughs> I think yeah. that your Doctor Doom has been skating around California in neon outfits. <laughs> what What is that a reference to? Come on. I haven't seen anything like that. So Who's been know. skating around California in neon outfits, buddy? I don't know. Are you serious? Yeah. Barbie. You think Dr. Doom is Ryan Gosling, or you think it's Margot Robbie? Ryan Gosling. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. The okay. gray man is like another chapter in this dude's career. Yeah. Do you know what the chapter is? It's the chapter that says, a papa gotta get paid. <laughs> okay. That's what it is. It is Ryan Gosling who has resisted. You can rest assured he's been approached by Marvel yeah. and DC in the past. Yes. Has resisted all overtures. Now he's got kids, right? Yeah. Uh, he's doing Gray Man movies, yes. universes now with like scripts that are bad i mean i i actually thought Greyman was okay i didn't mind the movie at all but the i haven't seen that yeah. um so if he's ready to do something like that i could see him doing a superhero movie so now we're yeah. talking marvel dc i think he's he would do marvel yeah because for obvious reasons right. and i don't think that ryan gosling loves being the hero Oh, I think he loves. He has a darkness about him. We know yes. this, yes. right? We I think we know this from his yep. choices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think they would be very lucky to have him. I agree, and I think that that is my prediction that Ryan Gosling will be Doctor Doom. All right. Well, let's let's hit some more of these stories before we get to these. The last stream lab super sets. We're, we're already at four fifty three, man. We're running out of time here. Uh, Destin Destin Daniel Cretton has been named as the director for the Avengers Kang the Kang Dynasty. Are you excited by this? Shang-Chi director, he's doing the sequel, but and doing the Wonder Man series, which you have no idea who that is. But are you do you like the idea that he him coming in for uh, the Avenger for Avengers the Kang Dynasty? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. I uh I think I like it more than like, you know, Peyton Reed, who could still end up doing Avengers Secret Wars. Sure. He was, you know, a, a strong contender. You know who I'd love to see come back and do Avengers Secret Wars is who? Who? Johnny Favreau. John Favreau would be interesting. I got no problems with that. I can I'm, see think, I'm thinking Coogler will do Secret Wars, but uh, Favreau could be interesting. I, I, I think if I was Coogler, yeah. I'd be ready to <laughs> wash my hands of this shit. How dare you. <laughs> I, I think Ryan Coogler can do anything he wants. And he should be wanting to do something else besides <laughs> making Marvel movies. I mean, Coogler could be our next Nolan. Let's not let's not yes. let's not lose ourselves. Yeah, I mean, yes, right. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'd love to see Coogler do one of these like hundred million dollar biopics about somebody. I'd be all about it, to be honest with you, because you're right. He's great as a Marvel director, but you can tell this guy is an anomaly amongst the stable uh, of Marvel directors. There's a Black Panther three. You take a producer credit on it. And yeah. Like with Creed. Luck, yeah. Bye. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. Uh, the other side of this, uh, uh, X-Men would be interesting by the way. A Coogler's X-Men. That could be cool. That could be, especially because a lot of people feel that X-Men is a, in essence, Magneto and uh, Charles X or Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. So there's a lot of, 
just like yeah, a, I like the idea of going like kind of black with the X Men, a black yeah. X Men, like at least diverse, if not all black, would be very imagine fucking black Wolverine. Oh my god, and, like people go John David, John David Washington is Wolverine or something, or I like that idea. Who knows? You could totally do an all black X Men. That would be awesome. So, what do you make? Storm White? I don't know. Anyway, you could do old black X Men. Question for you. Uh, also, you mentioned Gray Man. There's a Gray Man sequel and apparently a Gray Man series coming. I mean, can we wait till the? I mean, the numbers came in. It didn't even. It barely did above Hustle. Well, is this all smoke and mirrors to make you think Netflix is doing great? What is this all about? Yeah, it was uh, not a good number. I, I don't think. Yeah, and you know, my my good. What is this? What's happening on our, on our comment section? Is some is someone is there a raid? I'm trying to. Is there a raid? Who's Naked raiding? Sex X Y Z best. Of the, oh get rid of this yeah. Case. Sorry, let me block. And that this person. person. Get rid oh, of there. This. It is. <laughs> let me block that person. And good friend go. Justin Kroll t- trying to make excuses for <laughs> for Chris Evans, most likely, uh, you know, being like. Oh well, the movie came out in the summer. You know, maybe if it came out any other time, what would have been better? Like, listen, I get that it's the summer; people are outside. They're not all, you know, they're not all staying indoors on a yeah. lovely summer evening to watch The Gray Man. But <laughs> I don't know, man. That number for that budget, though, that's not what you want to see. If you're that's not a good number, right? And yeah. so they listen. They may have known that ahead of time, and that's why they announced the universe and the spinoff and all that stuff to distract you and say. No, this was a big success. Look, we've got this coming now and that coming and blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, if that movie did not get more views than The Adam Project, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Robert Adams said he came to watch uh, Roke and Snyder in hopes of getting the hookup with the sex bots. I, feel, I appreciate it. Sorry, Rob. I, I had to block them. Ooh, this is an interesting choice. Maybe Affleck to direct Secret Wars. I, I, I don't mind the idea of Affleck taking on MCU film. I, I like the film. idea of Affleck directing a comic book movie. I just feel like Affleck would do a DC movie first. Yeah, probably. Maybe do... Well, never mind. We'll Superman. Maybe do his Batman. I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. What else do we want to talk about? Okay, let's get to these questions here so we can knock them out. Uh, I am 2 flying Cam-, Cam says, one more question. How big of a financial flop was Lightyear? Is Pixar in any danger of an overhaul of some kind? The last few projects have... Been, have last few projects have been so under par for pixar love the show guys uh jeff what were the last few pixar projects i don't like uh, it soul onward i really like onward Turning i really red. like red i really like yeah. luca yeah what is this what are you talking about yeah i i like all the i've i've enjoyed the recent pixar films they're not like finding nemo and toy story but they're damn good films i have not been disappointed by a pixar movie since in a while since the good dinosaur i would good dinosaur really i would say i liked toy story 4 i liked uh, uh onward i really liked i really liked onward especially for that last scene with the with yeah. what happened there so yeah, onward was good yeah um, and, and luca was fucking good too and people don't give it enough I, I, I agree uh yeah. I, I yeah and i liked light year shit man i thought that was a damn good movie it was okay get, yeah Let's talk about one more, th- one, another thing here, Jeff. Uh, let's get your quick thoughts on this uh, real crime that happened. Uh, uh, the Chaco Taco is now discontinued. What are we going to do, Jeff, as East Coast boys without the Chaco Taco in our lives? It's been around for 30 or 40 years now. Uh, certainly a few of our calories and pounds can go to the Chaco Taco. So what do we do without the Chaco Taco, Jeff? I got to tell you. I don't believe I've ever had a Choco Taco. Oh, my God. Jeff. It is not something that the East Coast Jews were, were, were eating. When, when the ice cream man came to the beach, I had Rocket Pops. I ate a lot of Rocket Pops. Uh, but Choco Taco, I don't think so. Oh, I'd love to see Jeff Snyder at the beach as a young, young man. Did you wear the I was socks? beautiful. Did you wear the socks all the way to the knees? I had I a full wore... head of hair and it's six-pack abs. hey yo. Those were the days. Those were the days. Let's see here. We got a, uh, some super chats that came through. For, uh, shaving, for, the, for the, the closest I've shaved in years, Johnny. How, would you like that? That's good. I like it. Gallia Production says, Batfleck will be in Aquaman 2. It was just just broke now. Yeah, we covered that already, brother man. Thank you very much for that. Mumra says, winning time, Peacemaker and Cobra Kai are getting Blu-ray releases. Why these and not others like Stranger Things Season 3, Mando, Loki, etc. Choice process? Is it a physical media thing? What do you think it is, Jeff? Uh, well, those are different 
places, right? Winning Time, Peacemaker. These are HBO shows. And Co- but Cobra Kai is Netflix. Cobra Kai is Netflix, and the other and Stranger Things is Netflix, and Mando and Loki are Disney Plus. Uh, yeah. I mean, it may just be that, like, you know, Cobra Kai. Okay, th- those fans may skew a little bit older because they grew up on Karate Kid. Maybe they yeah. like physical media. You know, they may. Yeah. But we can't put Stranger Things on DVD because we need Stranger Things to get people to sign up. You know, we need the eyeballs. Right. So it, it could just be, a, you know, that that kind of a thing. It could also be contracts, licensing. I, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you don't think it's a physical media thing. When you say a physical media thing, you think it's streamers don't want to put stuff out on physical media? Yeah, like people are moving away. Companies are moving away from physical media as, you know, like if you go to Best Buy now, everything's just mixed in. DVD or Blu-ray, it's all. Yeah, there's definitely less part. shelf space too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I'm saying. They're, they don't care about physical media quite as much anymore because everything is streaming. Okay, but, but still half that question is, you know, these shows are getting physical releases. So right. You know, I, I don't know. It just depends. Well, that's what the question is. Like, why is why are the them getting physical and, and this this one isn't? So, winning yeah. time deals may have been structured for HBO, like an HBO show, and those yeah. always got physical releases. So the fact yeah. that it, I mean, it's I don't fucking know, dude. I just saw a uh, trailer for a new Hulu documentary about the Lakers. They put that shit together real quick. I have a feeling that those guys saw winning time. We're like, we need to redeem the brand. You are actually completely. totally, totally wrong. Really? Wow. <laughs> because one of the ex- executive producers is my former roommate. What? I've been working on it since we lived together like <laughs> seven or eight years ago. Well, the timing of it is conspicuous, to it's, say the least, considering what happened with winning time. You're, so. you're 100% right on that. But yeah, we that, should get your friend on the show. I'd love to hear about his process and all of he that. Would, you, would, you would love him. You two really? would definitely hit it off, I Let's feel like. It. Let's do it. Uh, anyways, um, is there, there is. I, I did watch something fascinating. I can't really talk about it. I'm embargoed. Okay. There's a Tim Donaghy documentary coming out. Ooh. On Netflix soon. Wow. It's a doozy. Really? Can't say more than that, though. I'm under embargo. Okay. All right. I'm currently watching The Captain. It is fucking excellent. Derek oh, Jeter. They, yeah, someone said so I would really good. like that. Dude, it's so good. Seven episodes right now. Only two have come out, but it's excellent. It's a lot. Excellent. It's a lot with Jeter. I'm, a, ESPN. I, I don't, I'm not a baseball guy. I respect the Yankees and, and Jeter and everything, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's for me. It's Jeter. Oh, Brandon says, I know Hollywood is a tough biz, but some actors just seem to vanish after a few hot years. Actors like Josh Hartnett, Amanda Seyfried, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Who would you like to see may see a make a mainstream comeback? Brandon, Amanda Seyfried's about to win all the awards for the dropout. What are you talking about? She's she's around, and Joseph Gordon Levitt's been doing a number of projects. Um, Josh Hartnett, he's just about to be an Oppenheimer. So yeah, yeah. all those people are working. Not not the greatest examples, Brandon. I, I yeah. get what you're saying. I think Amanda Seyfried for a while had the worst taste of scripts out of maybe anyone in Hollywood. Yeah, uh, she was just doing one dog after another. Yeah, um, I think that you know Mank obviously changed things for her. Yeah, right. We're working with Fincher, and you know she. I think she is going to win the Emmy. Gordon Levitt. Gordon Levitt is is interesting. Um, yeah. He took some time off, I think, to start a family. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that is it. Um, and yeah, he got he got caught in some good movies that just didn't do any business. Yeah. I mean, I thought Snowden was fine. I thought Snowden's The Walk good. was good. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he's a very good actor. It's great looper. He, great. he looks young. Yeah. You know, uh, so there's, I think there may be some physical limitations with some of the parts that he gets offered, but he, he's going to surprise us uh, eventually. And I bet you he gets an Oscar nomination in the next decade for something. Yeah, probably. Remember, he was Cobra Commander, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget. Um, Two quick things at the end here, Jeff. We talked about uh, we we're going to talk about Nope spoilers. If you guys haven't seen Nope, we're gonna we're doing a quick review uh, on the spoilers on this. Uh, any any thoughts on it? Do you want to drop or do you want to push this to next week? What are you feeling about Nope? Uh, no, let's. I mean, I think we can talk about it very quickly. Like, okay. go ahead. It was great for the first half. Okay, I thought I was really into it. Like. The first 20 minutes, because I, I was sort of like, I had my doubts. I hadn't heard the greatest things. 20 minutes into it, I was like, oh, shit, Jeff. Like, were you wrong about this? Like, yeah. did Jordan Peele knock this out of the park? Because it feels like he might have. 
Yeah. Uh, but no, <laughs> my, my spies in the end proved correct. Um, and I just thought that this movie, like, what is it ultimately about? Did, have we had this conversation yet? Does, uh, here's what, yeah, we did it. You called me that night you went to see it. We had a conversation about it. I loved it. I loved the film because once again, like the great Jordan Peele films, they work as a surface horror film just fine. You never need to go deeper than the surface if you just want to enjoy the movie. But for a lot of people who enjoy going below the surface, it's all there. A commentary on Hollywood, a commentary on white, uh, I'm sorry, on black owned businesses and how they function, a commentary on how Hollywood treats uh, child actors. There's all kinds of commentary throughout the film that they're making about the movie. And Joseph Gordon Levitt used Christopher Nolan cinematographer. I uh, not George, what am I saying? Jordan Peele. Sorry, used uh, um, uh, uh, Nolan cinematographer who did Dunkirk and a couple of the films of it to bring out that Hollywood vibe and feel to it. So, okay, I so love. Here, it. Here's the thing, John. Go it's got a commentary on this and commentary yeah, on that, yeah, yeah. And commentary on this. And if you're going to the the movies for commentary, it. you could just feast on this movie for days, guys. You but could. I go to the movies for stories, it, and this story is lacking. It's Jaws in the air. I, and, it it and, and I think that's a great description. Yeah. And I think I even stole it for LA Magazine's review, Johnny. How do, what, you son of a bitch? Check my review on that. I, I think I mentioned Why it. Why did you give me credit? God. I, I think I said that one colleague could get that. I don't know. The point is, John, <laughs> this movie is not dramatically satisfying. What? No. You're insane. This is a movie, it, it, like, again, when you sit down to write a movie, you ask yourself, what do the characters want? Yeah. And what these siblings want is to get rich and get famous and get on Oprah or some kind of similar Oprah show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. How are they going to do that? What, what, you know, they are going, they need to get a photograph. They need to yeah. get evidence right. of what is ever, whatever is out there. Right. And so that's what it's about. It's about people getting a photograph. And if that is dramatically interesting to you, you'll love this movie, but it wasn't to me. Okay. They're trying to find evidence once and for all of the thing that everybody talks about. Now, even That's when what it's you all find about. the evidence, John, who's going to believe them, right? Because if you go on YouTube now, there's a zillion YouTube clips right. of, of, you, of, of encounters and all kinds of things. Right. We still are all skeptical. So like, even if you get this magical photograph, right. who, well, who's going to believe you? It's like the magical video, right? Oh, wait, that's just a snippet of the entire. I need to see more before I believe what's actually going on here. That's what the symbolism is, dude. That picture symbolizes videos of police brutality, videos of racism, videos of these things. So we're seeing evidence coming out more and more, but people are always going like, oh, I need, there's always going to be scoffers. It doesn't mean you shouldn't try. It doesn't mean you shouldn't still put it out there. See, there's there's a lot that's going on in this movie. I'm, right? and, I, and listen, that may be true. And I have yeah. read a lot of interesting theories. Like, yeah. People are like I'm reading stuff like wow like you're really seeing all this stuff in this mm -hmm. movie that I just did not see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I don't claim to be the world's greatest critic. Okay, <laughs> I really I really don't. Um, but so I think I have you're on a show where you're. I, think I have good taste. Oh, okay. and so even though I may have missed a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. That's in this movie, and this symbolizes this, and this is a stand-in for that. Yeah. I don't think it ultimately matters because at the end of the day, the movie to me does not work. Okay. Fair enough. It works for me. And by the way, we said it was going to be a spoiler-filled discussion. So if you're still here, we didn't. Re what spoilers did we get into? I know. I don't. I, I don't know. If someone maybe feels that we talked about spoilers, kind we of said very spoilers. much gone out of my way to not say spoilers. Yeah. So all right. One last thing as we wrap up here. Paul Sorvino passed away. Jeff, thoughts on uh, Paul Sorvino and David Warner as well. If you have any thoughts on David Warner, but certainly Paul Sorvino, right there. Yeah, right up there, guys. Yeah. Uh, Paul Sorvino. A great character actor, right? Yeah. yeah. He left his mark in Goodfellas. It's crazy that we've lost all these guys. A Mount Rushmore full of guys uh, in, in mob projects, film and TV. But, um, you know, I know he did a lot more than that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, at the end of the day, it just comes back to Polly Cicero. And, and that is, yeah. if you can just get in one movie over the course of your career like that and, and get one role like that, as an actor, you're very lucky. Dude, he stands out in that movie that is that has De Niro, uh, uh, Pesci, and, and Ray Liotta yeah, all delivering career best work, all of three of them. And here's um, 
Sorvino coming in with energy that overwhelms all three of them. It it's is. Not, it's not career best work from De Niro. Come on. What? You're insane. Jimmy. You think Goodfellas is the best work of De Niro? Uh, I didn't say the best. This is oh, well, all right, fine. Career best. All right, fine. Some of the best work of his career. How about that? I, I'll put it in the pile with other things. But I think he's great. But the way he is in that movie, Sorvino, he overcomes them all. Like he's bigger energy than them all. And when in the room with him, Sorvino plays it so well. You know, I, there are character there are character actors who are unafraid to do anything. And certainly Sorvino from Oh God, remember he's the ev evangelical preacher in that film, essentially the antagonist, to like Romeo and Juliet, to Law and Order, to the Black Widow music video with Rita Ora and that Australian rapper chick, I can't remember, Iggy Azalea to um, Godfather of Harlem and to the Goodfellas, to Goodfellas. This guy has run the gamut, plus doing voiceover stuff. He's incredible, an incredible actor. I was watching a Law & Order episode early to, earlier today with him from season two. I love him. He loved him. He is a guy that you just immediately loved when you saw him on screen. So yeah. it is heartbreaking. He, had a warmth. he definitely yeah. had a warmth that yeah. I think distinguished him. Rocketeer? Um, yeah, absolutely. I see JMB quoting me in, in the comments. I'm not a great critic, but my taste is impeccable. They're, they're two different things, okay? Like a, a critic has, you know, is very perceptive yeah. about film. I, I don't claim to necessarily be that. I think that there's a lot of writers who are more perceptive than I am, but I also think that there's a lot of critics out there who just have awful, awful taste, mind bending taste. And I'm close with a lot of them. <laughs> How dare you? Or it's just like, I get I out of these movies, I'm like, wow, so and so thought that was amazing or whatever. Like, Jeez, remind me not to talk to that person for the next couple weeks. <laughs> well, I guess it's a good sign that you call me still after when you go see movies. So, yeah. um, <laughs> all right, there you How go. How bad the take is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap it up. There. Can, yeah. Jeff Snyder, uh, tell people where they can find you and read all the stuff you're writing about, my man. Oh, the Ankler. Uh, I will be back next week with a report on the flicks of the net. Ooh. Um, btlnews.com yes still need to finish my marcel the interview terrible and what's the other place sorry for la mag la mag.com working on an, an a review tomorrow of bodies 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 which was not 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 good yep that's why i didn't go to that screening I did not. I was offered that screening at Comic Con. And I was like, no, I'm not going to. I got a 90 billion percent of fresh rating of Rotten Tomatoes. Same as Marcel the Shell. <laughs> Every, everybody loves everything. I guess so. Uh, I haven't seen Barbarian. I resisted that one, but it looks, it looks like maybe I should see that because a lot of people are talking positive about that too. Which one? Barbarian. So I haven't seen that. Harry one. hated that. I don't know. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you all so much for joining us. I don't know. I don't know if I should have said that. A reviews embargo on that? I don't know. Uh, you can follow me at the Roka says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, the Outlaw Nation on Twitch. Remember to subscribe to the channel down below. Thanks to the over 200 of you who are watching us today. I think it's one of some of our biggest numbers. So we appreciate it madly. Make sure you hit a like on this video. Leave a comment down below. Likes and comments elevate the visibility of the show. I will eventually put time codes on this thing when I have some time. I'm heading off to a screening in just a little bit for 13 lives. I hope that's good. So look for my thoughts on that. Go see DC League of Super Vets this weekend. It's damn good. Uh, and um, come and follow. Come and listen to my other podcast, The Top Ten, The Cinephiles, and The Geek Buddies, all out there for you to explore. All right, we're out of here. Y'all take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you next time on The Hot Mic. Peace. Mike Sal the Shell. <laughs>